For the last six years, I've been on the discovery journey to figure out what it is to elevate El Paso, both practically and philosophically. Everything from religious leaders, philosophers, artists, blue collar, white collar, everybody has their own vision on how to elevate El Paso. The common denominators, repair what you see is wrong in the world, make a space and create beauty, and always start by elevating yourself. Today, we get to celebrate Hal Marcus's newest painting and his vision on what it is to elevate El Paso. Come with me. With a legacy of love, a character of tenacity, and a life full of color, Hal Marcus has always found a way to capture the best of our culture. It is truly an honor to be able to be part of this movement. It is truly an honor to be part of this new legacy. His legacy with his latest painting, Elevate El Paso. The thing about it is that we kind of create our own world. You know, the people we have as friends, the things that we do all day long, the things that we do at our job is our world. And we have the opportunity or the creativity to make that world just like as most awesome as, as we can. He's always had a smile on his face. He's always been helpful and collaborative. He's always helped uplift the community, no matter what's going on in his personal life. And he always turns it into art somehow. This is the crest of this building right now that they're restoring downtown. It's the one I'm painting right now. So as they're, as they're restoring it, I'm restoring it. <laughs> It's a beautiful building. I used to go there when I was a kid. There's a lot of stuff in here, and I think people can look at it for a long time, you know, and children, people of all ages, and it's just who we are. What inspired you to do this? What, what, uh, what, what sort of, like, feeling came upon okay. you to think like, about this? Well, well, very good question. If, if you look outside that window, yeah. that is the city of El Paso. That's the city of El Paso. Well, some of the things you see out there, like the Plaza Hotel and the West Star Building, and the rooftops and all this stuff. That's what inspired me, right? What I wanted to do was elevate El Paso so that we could see it in a real clear, kind of magical way. Do you think that I succeeded? Yes. Yeah? Does it look like better than it does in reality? Yes. Ah, see, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool because an artist, it's not like a photographer, because a photographer takes a picture and that's the way it is. But the artist can do really cool things, like the song, look how that is. I think that they're going to be uh, amazed and, and, and I think they're going to enjoy it. Uh, and, you know, because this is us. In the turn of the century, everybody was at Paris because Paris was the place. So this is my Paris. This is my place. That's because, you know, when I look out the window and I hear the church bells from St. Patrick's Church every 15 minutes, it's like the center of my life, of my city. <laughs> Even though I go to the synagogue and I'm Jewish, I still see this building here as being a focal part of my landscape. It's, it's like a symphony, you know, and I'm, I'm here with the, you know, the flutes and the violins and the cellos. This is the time where I can start putting more people, more things, more details. Think about putting a, a getaway car over here. You know, how the, the uh, Chicano people have an uh, old vehicle that's all has pom poms on it and this is just married. And... A person in time who was praying things that were eternal. And what we're trying to do today <laughs> just create like an aha moment. What would it take for every person to elevate El Paso? Well, you have to have the desire and to reflect the joy of our community in everything you do. And I think that Hal does that, and that is elevating El Paso. That's what this is all about. One of the things that people like about my artwork and that I like about my artwork is that you can see here looking out my window, I see the Plaza Hotel, I see the West Star, I see uh, lots of these uh, like pyramid-shaped roofs, and I see the, the community college and way off in the distance. You know, I, I can even on a nice day see the bridge, the bridge over to to Juarez, Mexico. It, it, it's all these angles. It's like a cubistic painting. So uh, you know, I'm living inside of my painting. When I do my drawings for the painting that I'm working on now, I basically uh, am imitating 
but with a poetic license, so to speak, I choose the uh, the bridge, the the, the, the X, the, the freeway, and the community college, the, the train station, uh, and all these things, you know, the, the streetcar. Um, so basically, I'm inspired by my city. My dad's philosophy is really simple. When he says something like peace and love, like he's really going to the baseline of really finding peace in his life and really creating an atmosphere of love around him and, you know, doing what he can within his arm's reach. And no matter how bad the circumstances, he's really focused on the well-being of his community. As corny as it sounds, you know, he really does believe and, and exudes that, you know, love is the answer. Because I feel that your art destiny is something that we deserve, it's something that we create. All those things that we see and that we hear and that we make and we surround ourselves with is our world. So we're one little world inside of millions of worlds. And there's like the worlds of politics, the worlds of art, the worlds of insects, the, the worlds of rhinoceroses, the worlds of butterflies, the worlds of Walmart. I mean, <laughs> There's worlds, you know, that we, that we surround ourselves in because it's what we manifest. That's the, um, the beauty of, of being an artist. There's something about what he does that pulls the soul of our community and puts it into the canvas. The eternal nature of art, it's almost like the feeling of inspiration itself with the culture that he's created through his love of the culture. I think he has helped so many people feel proud of the city. Now, if someone were to ask me who my favorite artist is, you know what I would tell him? Tell him. Me. <laughs> I've had a lot of great teachers, like Picasso, Matisse, Modigliani, Chagall. I love being artists because it's the tradition of art, you know. And if my hair is all messy or if I have paint on me, you know, it's okay because he's an artist. Yeah, I think he can do that. You know, if he looks like he's half asleep, it's okay. If he doesn't have a mud in his pocket, it's okay because he's an artist. I take a lot of pride in my children. I take a lot of pride in my friends. I take a lot of pride in my art because art is really the antidote for all that garbage you see on TV, consumerism and all the negativity. I think that's why also it's so easy for him to get up and paint because when he's painting, he's doing what he loves and he's in the present moment and he's creating a future filled with beauty. Because you can be an artist and, and, and paint the negative parts of life, which is fine if that's what you want to express, but he consciously chooses every day to wake up and be present and paint beauty and make his city and make his community and make his family and make his life more beautiful through art. And he does that with his painting, he does that with his communication, he does that with the games he plays, he does that with opening up his life and um, his mind to the infinite possibility of art. And I love that about him. I'm not just an artist when I paint a picture. Paint, painting the pictures is just what I do with all my time every day. You know, but that's not who I am, you know. <laughs> I'm the link between the heavens and the earth. I mean, why not? I can manifest whatever I want, right? I'm an artist, right? <laughs> yeah. Here we are. Uh, the painting, I officially named it Elevate El Paso, okay? And um, because I'm elevating El Paso to uh, um, a different height, as or you could say, or the, to it's more magical, or summing up the history of the... Mandy and the first transportation and the, you know, the streetcar, you know, and it's basically elements that, that I thought were important, like La Nube, you know, hasn't even opened up yet, you know, uh, so it's like elevating it to a different level, magnifying it, making it more magical, bringing it right up into your face with the St. Patrick's Church just right there in the center and using my imagination to have a wedding going on, which symbolizes love and happiness and mariachi. So that's what I named it. And it's taken about, I guess, a little bit over two months, which is really, really quick. I worked on it, you know, seven days a week. And they asked me, oh, is it a commission? Where is it going to go? You know, it's kind of like my children, you know, I have my children and I raised them and then I don't know where they're going to go. They're going to go wherever they want to go, you know, so every painting has its own destiny.
look out over your world and, and attract all the beautiful things that are around you. Thank you very much. He's, he's a master of all trades, he's a mason, he's a philosopher. He, he will tell you more about it because we're going to be showing a movie in about 20 minutes that he created. And you want to say something? It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored, thrilled. I wouldn't have been able to have done this without the help of everybody. James, uh, John Carlos, Paula. Paula. And of course, thank you so much for the opportunity oh, to do this. It's yeah. been a pleasure. He's got a great Woo! voice, right? He ought to be on TV, right? Uh, well, yeah. I, I think... The best thing to take out of the film is the fact that if any of us want to do anything right, is to be authentic to ourselves. Yeah. And this is the perfect uh, example uh, of it. Thank you, thank you. I've got my, it, takes a, it takes a village. So, uh, okay, drum roll. <laughs>